Hi guys, welcome to Practical Maintenance and in this video, as you can tell by my excellent hand-drawn title card here, we're going to look at common crane long travel faults. This is specifically going to relate to overhead cranes. Now these are faults that I've experienced in my time working as a mechanical maintenance engineer. It's faults that I feel are probably quite common but if you haven't had the right training or your or people within your maintenance department haven't experienced these things, they can be overlooked. Also, one of the big problems can be budget related. If your gaffer doesn't want to spend money, they might try and cut corners and make cutbacks to save money by not doing some of the, the things here that are needed to be done to stop these faults happening. So it's a little short term gain, but it's a long term loss because the job's not getting done right and overall at least the more downtime, more maintenance guys involved in having to repair things and, and so on. So the issues we're really going to look at often relate to misalignment within drives and I'm going to look at a crane that's more perhaps an older style of crane uh, as you'll see with this wonderful hand drawn image and what we're going to look at first is issues with the drive wheel diameters. Now, it's probably good practice just to change both drive wheels at the same time. And the reason for this is a slight difference in the diameter of the drive wheels can result in excessive skewing. And just to illustrate this, I've got a couple of coins here. Now, we're going to use the 10 pence to illustrate an older wheel and a 2 pence to illustrate a newer wheel slightly bigger diameter. So a lot of times to save money or time if you've got an issue with a drive wheel only one wheel will get changed and what this leads to is obviously the new wheel if it's not worn it's going to have a slightly bigger diameter but what that means is every revolution that wheel will travel a slightly further distance which leads to skewing. Now you're allowed one thou of difference in diameter for every inch of wheel diameter up to a maximum of 10 inches. So if you have a 20 inch diameter wheel, you're still only allowed 10,000 max. But just using the coins to illustrate this, you can see by my little drawings here I've done, I've given you all the difference in diameters and circumferences. It's not much, but after one revolution, you can already see that the two pence has travelled further than the ten pence and then again looking at this two and three revolutions it very quickly starts to overtake and if you imagine you've got a crane bay running perhaps a hundred yards down a bay you'll very quickly get misalignment and skewing and this leads to excessive wear on the crane wheel flanges so you're allowed 50% wear on a crane flange uh, crane wheel flange. So what this leads to is you'll change one wheel, you're getting skewing, oh you change the other wheel, you're getting skewing and you're just constantly chasing your tail. So you might save a little bit of money but six months later when a, a wheel that's lasted five, ten years is worn out, you, it's not cost effective. So just to give you a top down view of the crane, now it's a very basic drawing, you've got your central motor, gearbox, coming out into drive shafts extending to either side of the, the, the drive wheels. Generally you'll the, the drive shafts will be connected with a pinion gear to a, a ring gear around the wheel. It's a very simplified run. Now again just using the two pens to illustrate a new wheel and a ten pens to illustrate the old. What will happen here is when the crane drives it will move like this and it'll skew like that. And you'll get excessive wear, in this case on the outer flange of the new wheel. And diagonally opposite, you'll get wear on the outer flange of the trailing wheel. And then you'll get wear on the inner flange of the old wheel. And the opposite trailing wheel. Now here you can see a, an actual example of this. So the outer flange here is quite badly worn on this crane wheel. And you can just see the difference here. It's probably well past 50% uh, and it's uh, a failure. You can also see it looks like it's starting to round and perhaps collapse have actually seen a flange collapse and the cranes actually mounted the rail because of these circumstances. 
you can also see the trailing wheel here it's not quite as badly worn but you can see again the outer flange worn the diameter of trailing wheels doesn't matter so much because they are freewheeling they will speed up and slow down as required but because the drive wheels are set and it's all timed this is when you'll get skewing now you've just taken a, a sort of end view this is a slightly more accurate drawing uh, what I've seen as well is failures because of the excessive wear on the flanges you then get excessive float which is the distance between the flange and the crane rail now the excessive float has then allowed the, the wheel to move side to side a lot more and it's actually resulted in the inner flange starting to rub against that pinion gear you see at the top there and what's happened there is the gears got worn then the flange has also got worn and the flange has actually got under the pinion and uh, it has caused the top covers of the plumber blocks you see here to uh, either shatter or the bolts to get pulled right out and the threads damaged so things like this can get very costly because you have downtime you, you I mean going up cranes is high risk you know you're putting guys at risk the more you have to send them up cranes you're losing production you're you're having to buy more parts it, it can be very expensive so it's really important to do these things properly because cutting corners doesn't save you any money so another interesting fault I thought we'll talk about here relates to the drive couplings themselves so the couplings that connect your drive shaft along the length of the crane this is a, a particularly good one so you can see here we've got our drive couplings connecting the, the drive shafts together this is where it comes down to more bad practice from maintenance personnel themselves it was an older imperial crane so uh, everything was on imperial bolts and things like that and there's obviously some issue I think probably bolts have probably sheared at some point and whoever went up to repair it just put in the closest metric bolts they could find now, I can't remember the exact sizes but the metric bolts were maybe a mil, two mil smaller in diameter and the end result was over time the bolts would be moving back and forward as the crane moved back and forward and it caused the hose to elongate so you can see here I'm just using these gaskets as a sample of what the couplings might look like and it illustrates it quite well because there's a little bit of play you can see just with the bolt there's a little bit of play but this is where it's important to train your maintenance personnel or, or hold people to high standards because so many people do a quick job think oh I'll not get sent back to it but then it can cause damage to machinery and it means other guys go go back and have to fix your mistakes or whatever so you know it's, it's always good to try and keep people at the top of their game or they've maybe done it without realizing why it's a bad thing but just if we put the other gasket on so you can see i've illustrated the one gasket with a, the tape and a little line and then this one's got a little line as well so when the, the guys probably first done this there's been very little play if the bolts have been tight you probably can't even see any play in it but as the crane moves backwards and forwards you can see a little bit just a little bit of play and over time what happened was the crane the uh, holes elongated so the issue that was coming up was the crane was just jamming on the rails it wasn't moving and guys have been working on it for a while and you know mechanical guys are saying it was an electrical problem the electrical guys couldn't find a problem so they're saying it's mechanical and this is where you've got an issue where you can have guys that have been in a job for years and they haven't seen something that they might have been in a job for a while but doesn't necessarily mean they're any good i'm sure we've all seen that but eventually became my turn of a look and very quickly i realized this is a mechanical issue and you've just got to start fault finding what what could be the most logical thing and I had a little look at the drive and I thought, hmm, something's not right here. So on the crane itself, I just marked all the couplings with a little uh, marker and you could see the movement right away. Once the crane dro drove, you could see the play. Now, I've, I've elongated the holes in this gasket just to show you, and it's no exaggeration. That was probably about 
a very similar level of elongation but you can see how much more movement there is there and it just meant one side of the crane was driving before the other and then it would just jam up occasionally it wouldn't this is what it was a little intermittent fault if it was maybe just in the right spot it would drive okay and a very similar incident was uh, it wasn't the coupling bolts it was the key itself again it looked like a pretty bad repair where a badly fitted key was put between the coupling and the shaft and again over time it elongated and it was causing the same problem so a lot of this comes down to training guys need properly trained uh, don't be afraid to question the way things are done because sometimes in many workplaces the way things have been done haven't been quite right these days we're quite fortunate we can go on the internet we can look at videos on YouTube you can find a lot more data there that maybe guys that have been in a job for years they've become stagnant they don't you know or they don't know any better and you can have like people don't want to spend their budgets and they don't appreciate actual proper preventative maintenance does cost money and you can have people that maybe don't understand the job that they, they don't realize just how important certain things are but anyway guys hope the video is informative thanks for watching if you think I've said anything that's not right or you've got something to add, please leave a comment. I'll get back to you and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.